but riddle me this. How are we supposed to fix the foster care system for our own people, our own children, by bringing in more children from other nations and spending our tax dollars to bring them under our umbrella? Doctors have noticed a rampant increase in patients reporting severe neck and upper back pain. This growing trend is likely caused by people spending more time in front of their screens in the past year. It's become common that even a new term was coined, quarantine neck. This is why I highly recommend Magic Hands. Magic Hands uses revolutionary technology that recreates the feeling of a lifelike massage in your own home and reverses the pain caused by quarantine neck. Magic Hands features specialized materials, adjustable wrist supports, and multiple color options. Four deep kneading nodes, nodes designed to recreate a lifelike shiatsu massage, customizable massages to make every session unique, heat functionality, and breathable mesh covering. Get Magic Hands today by going to www.magichandmassage.com. That's Magic handmassage.com or visit the link below. Muchachos y muchachas. So today there was a press conference. Apparently, uh, this is something that I recently learned of as we've been keeping tabs of this irregular administration and the peculiarities that come with it. So today there was a press conference, but it was so uneventful. We learned absolutely nothing new. Um, but with that being said, I'll still sort of cover and breeze through just a tad of it, just a tad of it, like the dull lights. We can't call them highlights. We can call them dual lights. But something very important did come up, and I do want to segue into a more important topic in relation to the administration. So I won't give too much uh, time and attention to it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in. So the first thing being that this this guy, um, who again is the leader of the free world apparently, but he can't answer questions without the guidance of his staffers. And uh, here's one example here where he is seemingly reading down a list that he already has, and I'm going to show you a little bit more specifics on that. Okay, um, hang on. Uh, sorry. Oh, Sing Ming, Miss Kim. Interesting, yeah? Like, can't. There you go. Like, you, you need so much guidance. That um, you know, you you've got to you got to read down a list of pre-selected questions. So, reported very well by the New York Post, and this isn't anything new. You know, this isn't anything. Again, it's not anything exciting. So, I'm just going to quickly breeze through this. But there were photos of cheat cards, which you know I'm not so much against. You know, sort of this Kaylee McKennedy situation. She had a big binder full of like organized notes, and but the the big difference is is that Kaylee McKennedy had impromptu questions, not pre-selected, uh, you know, questions, pre-selected media outlets and pre-selected reporters. Um, she really, uh, she really took a hodgepodge of everybody and answered uh, uh, any tough question but this guy has to have pre-selected everything so that's the difference and he couldn't even he couldn't even read off the card like the card had every like every single little word that he had to read out loud and he couldn't even do that he uh messed up despite even having the answers right in front of him and this is a close-up right here of the journalists this is uh this this cheat sheet here you can see headshots with the name next to it and then what seems to be a number system. And I think to me, this looks a lot like a sticker sheet. Like maybe there was like a system where once he answered the question, he took, took off the sticker with the number on it and matched it with what he already answered. I don't know. It, it, that just that's what it looks like to me, which is so embarrassing, right? But again, like I stated, water's wet. Nothing is too <laughs> surprising with this administration being that it's embarrassing 
So the thing that I actually wanted to bring up came from a reporter and she asked this question. This was actually, this is the best segue that I can make to this more important topic. And it is caused by this administration. This is what this reporter had to say here. Will you commit to allowing journalists to have access to the facilities that are overcrowded moving forward? I will commit when my plan very shortly is underway to let you have access to not just them, but to other facilities as well. And just to be clear, how soon will that be, Mr. President? I don't know, to be clear. I don't know, to be clear, is what he said. Incredible, incredible. So I, I'm actually glad that there was some sort of accountability. I know that, you know, this isn't full accountability that we could be holding this administration to because there's only so much that that whatever this matrix can do and its power, right? But she brought up a great point. And the reporter, I believe it was the same reporter, but this a reporter challenged him on his, his crisis at the border. So one of his... A main rebuttals to this criticism of the border crisis was that he was a nice guy. And so all of these migrants know that he's a, a nice guy. And therefore, you know, that's why they just bum rushed our country. They just they just thought he's such a nice guy. You know, let let me in so much so so much so that they all made T-shirts in unison at the same time, collaborated, communicated and Thus, they were all there at the same time. But if you ask me, and this is just my opinion, if you ask me, kind of looks a little foundation-y, kind of looks a little GS foundation. Can't name the billionaire. I flaps, as my friend calls him. But um, it just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it is. I don't know that for certain. I don't. I'm just saying it kind of looks like it, you know, but anyway, Biden says that he's such a, 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 a nice guy that that is why the migrants are coming in uh, are crossing, crossing the border. But he is. He doesn't have a handle on the situation. He definitely didn't plan framework to even handle this, this fantasy dream. And, you know, it, it almost seems a little intentional, but his rebuttal also consisted of critics have argued that his emphasis on rejecting the cruelty of far, former President Trump's immigration policy has sent a message that is now safe to cross the border illegally. What's happening today? I like to think it's happening because I'm a nice guy, but no, it's because it happens every year. If you take a look at the number of people who are coming in, the vast majority, the overwhelming majority of people who are coming in across the border are being sent back. So, you know, big contradiction, big contradiction there because, you know, he, they, 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 look, if you looked at the Democratic presidential debates last year, last fall, every single one of those Democratic candidates raised their hands at a question asked by, uh, what is her name? I think it's like Sabrina Guthrie or something like that. And she asked them, um, will you have a more, will you, will your governmental agencies or your governmental policy allow for more migrants or something to that matter? It was like, do, will you plan to, to take care of migrants? I think it was like something like that. I'm paraphrasing here. And every single one of those democratic candidates raised their hand. So it, it's not that, oh, surprise, oops. You know, I'm just such a nice guy. I'm so popular. People are coming in. No, they relax the policies. And thus they created this chaos. We're going to get into the chaos. This might be a little bit of a lengthy video, but I'm sure you guys wouldn't mind that. So one of the reporters challenged him. And I don't even know how she got this question in, to be honest with you. But she challenged him at the press conference saying that, um, she challenged Biden's denial of responsibility soon after saying she had just returned from the border where she had spoken with some of the minors being detained. And she said a 10 year old boy had been sent by his mother specifically because she believed Biden would accept him. Biden responded by saying the mother must have been very desperate. And 
the, uh, Biden went on to make uh, why he makes no apologies for removing Trump's border policies almost immediately upon gaining office. He pointed to statistics showing that immigration surge this time of year under Trump as well, saying it happened every single solitary year, which, you know, you know, even with that particular event, I still question that the surge that ha- that caravan he's talking about that caravan, the caravans that were happening that one, uh, you know, that one summer. And that is even questionable. You know, it looks a little eye flappy. If you, if you catch my drift. I'm pretty sure some of you in the comments can help others know what that means. It just seems really coordinated, those caravans. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that's true. I'm not saying that that's a fact. I'm not even claiming that that actually happened. I'm just saying like it in a sci-fi world, in a movie, it would just seem like it's a little coordinated and, and choreographed. That's just me. So going back to it, the Biden administration is engaged with negotiations with Mexico to make the nation start accepting refugees, which is not current, which it is not currently doing. He references policies under President Barack Obama as well, saying sending aid to South American countries can also help alleviate surges at the border. So again, making America last. And uh, aiding other countries before he aids his own people. Great. Fantastic. So I'm glad that this reporter challenged him. You know, it's it's respectable that any mainstream media reporter would challenge him. And which brings me to this. There is so much happening (laughs) that is not being reported by the mainstream media because they're trying to downplay this. I'm going to get into some conditions, but listen to this. So the other day when I reported on, it was, it was, oh, it was when the first, when these photos first were, were leaked about the internals of these facilities and the conditions. It was like first unveiled there, (laughs) excuse me. And what I what I said in that video was that what I pointed at is that these kids, they're they're being processed through the centers they are being held for a couple like a few days, more than a couple, a few days. But the uh, the a goal is to get them out to sponsors. I remember saying that in, in that video that they get they get released to sponsors and we don't know who these sponsors are. We don't know where they come from, if they've been vetted or what. But I even pointed out that even by observation, these are overwhelming numbers. So how is it that we're going to safely care for other nations' children and even ensure that they're they're safe? And it, it, it can't happen. It just can't. And this is evident here. This is an article from the Daily Mail exclusive. This is a quote. I consider it human trafficking. So a California foster foster couple. Uh, this is this is Travis and Charla Caw, and they uh, they foster children, and also run a uh, I believe it's like a human trafficking either aftercare or, or awareness group, and the the CCLD, the Community Care Licensing Division approached them by email and asked them if they could house up to 26 children. I kid you not. California foster parents are being asked to care for a staggering 26 or more unaccompanied migrant children per household um, revealed by the Daily Mail. On March 12th, foster parents Travis and Sharla received a voicemail amid the crisis at the Mexican border. This is an emergency message. Please respond to this urgent message from the CCLD, which is the Community Care Licensing Division. The voicemail obtained by the Daily Mail said, the CCLD would like to know how many available beds you have to serve additional youth, uh, which, which is a desperate call. We all know why. We all know why. But it's a, it's a desperate call. The couple received an email with the same urgent message containing links for them to communicate how many beds they have, ranging from zero to 26. 
And here's here's a reminder of these it, the, the internals of this facility. I'm going to get into even more details. I'm going to get into even more details because th- this is this this absolutely need. If nobody's going to th- talk about this, I will talk about it. Right. Like this needs to be talked about. These are humans. Right. And to, oh, every, like, everything is free, like, open borders, blah, blah, blah. But then you don't want to take responsibility. You need to be, you need, we at least need to talk about it and have a conversation about it. If you don't want to talk about it, I'm going to talk about it on my channel, on my platform. So these, these are the conditions again. And they state, usually the maximum amount of children you're allowed to foster at one time is six. The CCLD is asking this couple for 26, up to 26 beds in their home. That's outrageous. That is outrageous. That is, that is impossible. It's impossible. We called our caseworker. She, he, they say, we called her caseworker and she told us that everyone was calling her because they had got the same call, said that the small automotive business owner from Orange, California, she said that there was a big influx of children coming in, but she didn't know w- where from. And it, it later states that they are trying to address the needs of a record number of an unaccompanied children who are arriving from Central America who are I- escaping impossible situations such as poverty, violence, and natural disaster, it adds. The couple were shocked at the request being made. Get this. Get this statistic. This is incredible. At any given point in time, there are 30,000 plus children in the Los Angeles County foster care system alone. Guys, we do we know we already know, right, that the foster care system is already broken. It's already broken. We already have a problem. We, We had a problem that we needed to fix and we were probably in route to fix it should we have the right the correct leadership. I I could foresee that that could have been fixed. But riddle me this. How are we supposed to fix the foster care system for our own people, our own children, by bringing in more children from other nations and spending our tax dollars to bring them under our umbrella? Like, it it just makes no sense at all. It's, It's so upside down. That makes no sense to me. We already have an existing problem in the foster care system. Let me tell you something. A lot of times, and this is going to be a little bit of a sad story. Sorry, but it's reality. Got to know about it. But when I, when I used to visit these, um, they were safe houses for trafficked children, like rescue, rescue trafficked children. And, A lot of these kids are products of a broken system. So think about it, the cycle. These kids, they have broken families. They have um, abusive parents or guardians who either use drugs or are alcoholics and they become abusive or they get neglected. And what happens, these children, they, I mean, it's innately, innately, we all want guidance. And so they seek guidance or they seek love from another source if they don't get it at home. So then these pimps come along and they entice these children. Hey, I can take care of you. I can give you everything you want, blah, 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 blah. And these kids, of course, like that's, that's, that's the only love that they know. And so they get, get, go out on the, on, on the streets. I know this is a a long, you know, primer, but you got to understand this is what happens in the CPS system. And um, I'm sorry, in the, in the uh, broken runaway system, right? So then these kids, they then get entrenched in the CP, broken CPS system that can't already keep track of everybody. It can't, it can't help everybody right now. You know, it's broken. It's broken. And I don't know. I don't know where the, the hole, the pa- where to patch the hole or anything. That's the whole point of this. It's broken. You know, these kids, they get, they're so broken They go through this broken system. They get funneled back on the street and then the cycle repeats. They get trafficked again. 
it's incredible. It's incredible that these Biden supporters like don't don't already know this. But of course, they're already doc indoctrinated with this la la land theory that, you know, everything's going to be fantastic and everything is so great. And like these things are just so minuscule. But they don't know the reality. This is reality. This is the real world. Like, this is the reality here. The CPS system is broken. So when when you already have a broken system and then you want to influx children from other nations to break the system even more, th th we're uh, completely obliterating our next generation of our young generation. It's so sad. And I'm sorry that I had to little uh, have a little rant on that. But I've seen these kids for myself. I know that they're seeking love. They're seeking, they're seeking bet. Like they're seeking good houses, good systems. And unfortunately, you know, it gets, now it gets a, an influx and overrun by people from other countries. And we, we don't even have a framework for it. That's the thing, like build a framework for it. Ugh. Okay, so ask us already certified uh, parents. So anyway, let me go back. At any point, at any given point, there's already at least 30,000 kids in the foster care system. In the foster care system. I know I've mentioned CPS. I'm sorry, I said CPS, the foster care system. That's what I meant. Sorry. So to ask us already certified foster parents to take on children from another country when we can barely take care of our own foster crisis doesn't seem beneficial to either side because either way someone loses a bed, she added. Travis, who along with his wife runs a nonprofit ag uh, against human trafficking, believes this is just the tip of a sinister iceberg. And he says, I consider it human trafficking, he said. It's not the burden of taking kids in because we have the heart for it. But these kids that were taken from the border for a money scheme and now they're going to use us as a resource, as resource parents to take care of them. And this is the email I'm showing you guys here in front of you, dear families. I'm, I'm not going to read through it, but they're basically saying due to the crisis, yada, 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 yada. We need to determine resources and bed. And then you can see here. You can see here that they are providing links for beds uh, and capacities. 26 plus. So it's not even, it's not, you guys see this? It's not even just 26. It's, do you have 26 or more? 26 or more. Like who has 26 or more beds? You know? Who has that? It's so unrealistic. And you know what? You know what, Biden supporters? Why don't you take these migrants into your homes? You, 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 this is what you campaigned for. This is what you voted for. Why don't you take them in your homes? The, these celebrities that like preach, preach their woke gospel to us. Why aren't they opening up their mansions and their beds to house these migrants? They won't because they're hypocrites. Let me get back to it. Woosa. Dailymail.com reported this week that cartels are using President Biden's lax border policies to run multi-million dollar human trafficking schemes. Um, and of course, yeah, I mean, this is this makes sense. The the cartels, they realize, well, you know, more relaxed. Um, it's easier for us to get through. So, yeah, let's make more. Let's pop more more moolah on our more smuggling. Come on, I'll get you through the border. You You want to come through? I got you. They're going to get through because the policies are relaxed. Even the cartels know that. In a request for comment, the California Department of Social Service said, in their case of unaccompanied minor children who cross the border, responsibility for their care fat falls under the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services or the Department of Homeland Security. Basically saying, well, you know, um, it's just it's your responsibility. It's our responsibility now. Like, they, you know, I know we welcome them in, but it's our responsibility now. But really, it's not their responsibility. They're putting off the responsibility on on people with hearts like uh, who, who would it, what is their names? Like Travis and Sharla, who who have a heart to do this. They're putting it off on them. 
it, it's so irresponsible. So let me end with this. The conditions inside these facility centers. This is part, I believe, why they don't want reporters in there. Why they don't, they won't allow access. I'm glad she actually, that reporter actually asked Biden that question. Because this is what they're probably pr- trying to mitigate away from. People seeing this. Exclusive. Border agent gives inside account of overcrowded facilities. This is from the Epic Times. The family unit holding cells smell like urine and vomit. Fights break out in the unaccompanied minor cells. Scabies, lice, the flu, and COVID-19 run rampant. Up to 80 individuals are squeezed into a 24 by 30 foot cell and there aren't enough mattresses for everyone. Sheets of plastic divide the rooms. Any diseases that are in there is kept is being kept in there like a Petri dish. You you guys hear that? Any diseases, illnesses, viruses, anything. They're being kept in there like a Petri dish. Mind you, what is the big story? The big story is that we're in the midst of a pandemic. But yet we can keep diseases, viruses, and all these illnesses in this close capa- uh, closed-in capacity tent, or you know, whatever you want to call it, cages, facilities, like a Petri dish. So he says, any diseases uh, uh, that are in there is being kept in there like a Petri dish. The smell is overwhelming, a Border Patrol agent said, describing the conditions in the facility in South Texas. The agent Carlos, not his real name, spoke to the Epic Times in condition of anonymity for fear of repercussions. That already speaks volumes. They're trying to keep these border. Look, I told look, this is what I also said. I know this is a long video. Sorry, but I just I'm so passionate about the subject. Like people need to know like what's going on. This is crazy that that this was campaigned for. People actually shouted in the streets for this and they can't even house these migrants because they're hypocrites. Celebrities, along with regular people who are friends and family who screamed for this can't even handle the situation they're ter- they're really really silent all the latinx people where are you these people need homes they need beds but no oh no people like travis and charla they'll take care of it we just campaigned for it it just it it just grinds my i just can't, like how do we wrap our heads around this going back to it So the Border Patrol, oh, yeah, this is what I was going to say. Sorry. This is what I said in my last video, too, that these people like the Border Patrol agents, the personnel over these facilities, they're going to start speaking out about these things because they're so sick of it and they're so desperate. It's not it's not their fault. They, they're only humanly they only have human humanly possible capabilities to have a handle on this situation and so when they can't handle it anymore but they're still amounted to take care of these things they're they're human they're gonna speak out they're gonna leak more i'm 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 expectant that we're gonna hear more and more atrocities. I'm expect- expectant of that because these people, these personnel, they know what they're in for. They're being put against this with no additional resources, help, or money. This is how irresponsible the, all of this is. Okay, let me continue. Sorry. Border Patrol agents on the floor of front lines are getting so frustrated that they're now risking their livelihoods to reveal what's really going on in the legal immigrant processing facilities. Told you one or more two agents are left in control of three to five hundred people during a shift. No agent wants to report physical or sexual assaults between the aliens because they'll get blamed for letting it happen. There are also forced to separate a child from an extended family member because he or she is not a biological parent. And uh, it says that usually they were able to process the unaccompanied minors in like 72 hours. But these pers- these agents and personnel are saying we're getting them out of here as quickly as possible. But we're so overwhelmed right now. 
It used to be easy to get them out in 72 hours, not anymore. Now they're staying for 10 to 12 days. It's horrible. And, you know, it goes into some some statistics I've already gone over. You know, I'm sure there are mounting statistics as well. Um, but for the sake of this video, because I'm already running long, I want to I want to end with this part, which is always going to be uh, the aspects of human trafficking and risking these children's lives by holding shiny objects over here in the United States. Hey, come over here. We're great, you know? And then you put all the responsibility off of people who had nothing to do with that decision, but have a heart for the cause, have a heart to, to help the most vulnerable in our community. But that's the thing. It's in our community that we have to help for first. America first. Okay, let me continue. I'm sorry. I go on these little rants because I'm just, I'm so... I, I know, I know that this this is what it was leading up to. And it's so frustrating that people vowed for this, but they don't want to handle the repercussions. So they say, we're dealing with the um uh, this is what this is what the Border Patrol agent has to say. And he's seeing these things firsthand, by the way. This is a guy um, that is uh, anonymous. So his name is not really Carlos, but he he reported this anonymous. He's seen these things for himself. He says, we're dealing with a different culture who's not afraid to send all their kids under the age of five, knowing they're going to get raped, knowing they're going to get killed. Carlos said, you talk to the adults or the teenagers and they'll tell you they raped three or four girls and they kicked them off the trains. They're going to die. Two thirds of migrants traveling through Mexico report experiencing violence during the journey, including abduction, theft, extortion, torture, and rape, according to Doctors Without Borders, which has been providing medical and mental health care for migrants and refugees in Mexico since 2012. Almost one in three women surveyed by the MSF said they had been sexually abused during their journey, 60% through rape. Look. I know this is with a long-winded video. I actually, I didn't plan for this to be a long-winded video. I actually plan to do two videos, one covering the press conference and then one covering this subject. But I just thought like the press conference wasn't anything exciting, but I did want to like squeeze in some of the gaffes, you know, but definitely segue in that really important question that was asked and also highlight the importance of those reporters in there because I would encourage any mainstream media reporter to continuously push back and challenge these questions. You know, I, I know that the administration is not going to do anything, but at least for the public eye to see that there is a dichotomy that is, that is there and there's a contrast that we should be observing. So if anything, it was to highlight the importance. No, even if I, even if I disagree with the bias of their network or with their, you know, media outlet, at least this one question could possibly blow holes into some sort of doctrine of this administration. So with that being said, that's more so of an update on the whole migrant crisis situation is still ongoing but these are the conditions this is what these this is the irresponsibility that they're trying to push off onto regular families people with hearts for this for for not necessarily this cause they're being forced into this cause but they have hearts to help children and help those who are most vulnerable in our communities but now they're being impacted by the crisis that they will not take uh, that the administration will not take responsibility for <sighs> Anyways, guys, um, yeah, I, I'm really long winded. I had a lot to say in this video. I had a lot to say today, um, but I, I hope that it had some sort of importance. And um, if anything, please share this video, uh, guys. I try to get the word out there. Share, share this video. And um, please like, subscribe, uh, get my engagement going. Thank you so much for always supporting me. Thank you for always holding me up. And thank you for being so passionate as passionate as I am about this cause um and and 
you know, at least spreading the word. And that's, you know, if there's anything you can do, at least do that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and thank you for supporting the channel. And if you think I do a good job and if you want to see me uh, do more and continue on, uh, please consider going to natalydenise.com slash donate or there are easy links in the comments below. You can buy me a coffee or, you know, you can send me something quick and um, anything is appreciated. Believe me, um, the money that anybody spends on coffee, this is just an update. If you do buy me a coffee, I'm not spending it on Starbucks anymore. I am completely uh, going patriotic. I am buying nothing but uh, patriotic uh, coffee, meaning that anybody who is a patriotic roaster or coffee, coffee seller or, you know, coffee manufacturer, that's where my money will go. And believe me, I need my, I need my coffee. I make my own iced coffee now. I don't go to Starbucks. Um, but, uh, you know, with so much production, it is so appreciated. So anyways, with that being said, I just wanted to, I don't know. I just wanted to throw that in there that, I, you know, my money is going toward is being refunneled back to Patriots and small businesses. So I'm really excited for that. So thank you so much for that. Anyways, guys, um, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching this video again, and I will catch you in the next one.